If you're a preschool teacher, chances are you probably have an art center in your classroom. Am I right? But which materials work best in the art center? And how do you get your little learners to go to the art center when there are much more exciting choices in the classroom, like blocks or dramatic play? And don't even get me started on teaching them how to use the materials in the art center appropriately without breaking them or wasting them all. In this episode of Elevating Early Childhood, I'll be answering these questions and more. So stick around, it's gonna be a great show. But oh, I almost forgot to mention that this is part two of a series I'm doing on art. So if you haven't already listened to the first episode, you can go back and do that right now. You see, art is a form of creative expression, and the art center in the preschool classroom is a place where your kids can go to express themselves creatively. But I feel like the art center sometimes gets a bad rap in the classroom. It feels like the ugly stepchild of the glitzier centers, right? But in today's day and age, I've noticed that it seems like more and more kids are coming to preschool without ever having used their hands to do anything creative before. So what's a preschool teacher to do? First things first, let's talk about the materials that you put in this center. The materials need to be things that spark interest and inspire creativity. Now the objective of the art center is to be creative and create, right? And when children are in charge of the process and the materials that they use, they're much more likely to remain focused and on task in your art center. There are no coloring pages in the art center because they don't align with the objective of this center, which is creativity, right? Now, some of these are things that most of your kids probably aren't allowed to use freely at home, which adds to their appeal. So without further ado, here are my top 10 must-haves for your preschool art center. So first things first, we have paper. And I know that probably seems so Captain Obvious to you, but paper is really important. It's important to have different sizes of paper, different colors of paper, different types of paper. So Here I have just some examples of the type of paper I would put out in the beginning of the school year. So I have some paper that I found left over from something from a long time ago. It's like thin cardstock, thicker than paper, thinner than construction paper, and it came in all these different colors. Um, To be honest, it probably came from Ikea because they have some cheap paper like this there, and I have a whole bunch of it stockpiled. So I have all these kind of pastel-y colors Uh, This one's not pastel, but you can see there's a bunch of different colors. I can cut them in quarters. I can cut them in halves. So I've got a lot of different um, types of paper. And I like to keep these in a uh, paper sorting tray that I also got from Ikea. And I'll show a picture of that for you on the screen if you're watching along. So what do kids do with the paper other than color on it with their crayons or their markers? So there's a lot of things kids can do with paper. In the beginning of the year, I'll put out crayons and markers, of course, and that's kind of how we start because I figure most kids have had experience seeing or using crayons or markers before, hopefully, knock on wood, and paper as well. So I start out with what they're familiar with and I'm gonna work out from there. One of the other things I like to have in my art center are paper punches. Now these came from my local craft store um, and they, well, I think one of them might've come from uh, the Target Bullseye Playground, but wherever they come from, find yours, the most affordable, cheapest way that you can. But I love these lever punches because all kids have to do is push, right? Now we do want them to be using them to create things with because it's all about creativity. So watch how easy they are to use. Of course, your little kids, usually what they do is they put it, once they get the hang of putting the paper inside of the mouth of the punch, they usually use two hands and they push down really hard. And now you can see we've got a paper with holes in it, which they like just fine. And then if I turn this over on the bottom, the little paper pieces fall out, right? And that's why I like to have colorful paper um, because then they'll have all different colored hearts and butterflies and all kinds of good stuff. 
So I have a whole bunch of these punches. I don't just have two. I've collected them over the years. So I have a real nice collection of all different shapes. They have different um, animals and flowers, you name it. They've got shapes for it. So I just look for coupons to my craft store or I scour the um, Target Bullseye Playground to see if they have these again. I haven't seen them there in a couple years though. But I have a collection of these. I put these out in my art center. And of course, I'm going to teach my children how to use them first before I ever put them out. And then when they go out for the very first time, I'll stop by the art center um, those first few times that I put them out and I will make a little project myself for me, right? With the craft punches, right? So that way they have some kind of frame of reference. And another thing I like to put out along with the paper and the punches are glue sticks, right? Now, whether you use sticks or liquid glue is up to you. Liquid glue is great for fine motor skills. Um, in the beginning of the year, I like glue sticks because they're not as messy. And then I'm going to work up to the liquid glue later because it's great for fine motor skills. But here we have all those pieces of paper that we punched out, right? What are we going to do with them? So I'm going to show the children how they can use their craft punches to create designs or pictures on their paper, right? So one of the things though that we need to do that is to use the glue stick. And so I like to teach them how look, my glue stick is almost empty. Teach them how to put the glue on the paper and then put the little pieces on top of the glue on their paper. Because what they like to do, this every kid I've ever worked with has done this. They stick it on the top of the glue and they try to get the glue to cover it. And then they put it on the paper and that's a lot more work. So I try to tell them, just put it on the paper and then stick it to it. And so that helps because then a lot of times when they are, um, running the thing over the top of the glue, it gets ruined, right? Especially if it's like a new glue stick that's really goopy. So now we have craft punches and we have glue and we've got paper, crayons, markers, and we can make all kinds of lovely things with just that. But what if we added yarn? And so this, some of you may know what this is. In its former life, it was a Clorox wipes container. And um, I just put a label on there because when I put it on the shelf, I want to know what's inside of it because I use these for a lot of different storage things. And inside, I have just a skein. I think that's how you say it, skein of yarn. So one thing of yarn is in there. So I just shoved it inside of this wipes container, Clorox wipes. And I made sure that the little end came out the top and now they can pull it. And I'm also gonna have my trusty scissors here. So this means that if I put the yarn out, I will have had to have taught my kids how to use scissors first. So that will determine when I'm gonna put the yarn out in my art center. I want them to have some experience with scissors. So if you're watching this and it's the beginning of the year, this might not be the right time to put yarn in your center right? Until you've introduced cutting to them. But I will say that my kids absolutely love making pictures with yarn. And when I introduce the scissors and the yarn, I also introduce the liquid glue because you can't really stick yarn to paper with a glue stick. It doesn't work. So it's when they have more developed fine motor skills that I'll put these out. Kids love to make creations with the yarn and the, the pieces that they've punched with the uh, craft punches. So we've got our yarn in our Clorox container. And we've got our glue stick, our scissors, our paper, all of this goodness. So let's look at some other things. So as long as we're talking about yarn and craft punches and shapes, paper, glue sticks, scissors, why not add some tape? So here we have some washi tape. 
And now you can find washi tape at the Dollar Tree. They sell it there now. I've gotten it at other dollar stores like Daiso, which is a Japanese dollar store. They have lots and lots of it. It's very inexpensive and you can buy several rolls for a dollar. And these, they're small rolls, obviously, um, but they're fun patterns and colors. So this is very high interest for kids. When you put these out, just be sure that you have some rules set around this, how much they can use and what happens when it's gone, things like that. Um, but it is a lot like painter's tape in that, well, we can use the scissors to cut it. <laughs> in that it's not as sticky as regular masking tape. And I like it for that reason. So your kids can come here and they can practice cutting. Now, if you have one of those really cool um, tape dispenser things that holds a bunch of different rolls, I have one of those around here. I just forgot to get it out. And I have like six different rolls of this washi tape on this little dispenser. And all they have to do is pull it off the little dispenser and I got the dispenser for washi tape at Daiso, the Japanese dollar store. So you can see now we've really got a fun project going on here. We've got yarn, paper shapes, tape, glue. We've used our scissors. This is so fun. So next up, we have the stapleless stapler. I know, say that five times fast. And this is something that I showed you before in my writing center uh, video because I usually combine my art and my writing center. But if you have a separate art center, and I know some of you have to because of your program requirements, um, but look at this. All you have to do is hold it in your hand or your kids rather, it's for the kids. And look at that. And now they've made their own little book and there are no hurt fingers. It's almost like a hole punch and it creates a little book right? Or it staples and creates a little book so they can make their own little booklets. This would be great if you do some kind of writing activities where they're um, writing every day. You could staple the pages together uh, or have them rather staple the pages together. It's not going to hurt their little fingers. It's a lot like a hole punch. It does require a little bit of hand strength, right? In the hands um, to staple the paper, but super fun. And I find that my kids, even if they're not making a book, even if they're just making a craft, they'll come over and staple it at the end and be like, look, I stapled it. Well, great. Good for you. And I've even had some kids who will try to thread the yarn and kind of make like a lacing activity um, with little holes that it creates. So stapleless stapler. And if you want links to any of the big items that I talked about, we'll put the bigger ones in the description. If you're watching along on video, click more underneath the video to expand the description box and we'll have links to those bigger ones there for you, as well as the blog post that goes along with this podcast episode that will also have the links as well. So next up, we have quick sticks. And quick sticks are absolutely amazing. So these things, if you haven't heard of quick sticks, you are in for a treat. I don't work for the company, but every teacher that I have introduced these to goes gaga for them, okay? Because they are paint in a tube. Basically, it's like lipstick, only with tempera paint. So they look just like glue sticks, right? And they function in the same way. You, you, you uh, rotate the bottom and the paint comes out the top like that. And you rotate it the other way and the paint goes down and so forth. And then watch how they work on paper. That is so cool. So I just took for our listeners, I took a quick stick and just made a happy face on a piece of white paper to show you how easy it was. Kids love, love, love these. Even kids, kids who don't like to get their hands dirty or who are afraid of getting their clothes dirty or for whatever reason, maybe paint's just not an option. I love to use these. I have them in my art center all year long, but I start the year with these. So after the first few days, after I've done the paper and the crayons and the markers, this is one of the very first tools I put out uh, because kids absolutely go crazy for them and they feel like they're painting, right? 
And here's the kicker. You don't need a drying rack for these, and you don't need to worry about them transferring paint or getting paint on their clothes because after like 20 seconds, it dries completely. So if you're watching along, you can see I'm running my finger over the paper and nothing is coming off. So they love these. And I, what I like about Quick Sticks too is that... Um, they started selling them in a lot of different places. When they first came out, it was very few places that had them. They hadn't really caught on here in the States yet. And just a few places had them and they were really pricey. But once they caught on with popularity, they started showing up everywhere. And now you can get them at the dollar stores sometimes. So I have gotten them from most recently Daiso, which is that Japanese dollar store I talked about. They have them on the West Coast and in the Southwest and some places on the East Coast. I don't know if they've gone inland yet to like uh, Midwest and so forth, but you can find them in some dollar stores in those areas and you get a pack of like um, several in a pack, right? I think somebody said they'd seen them at Target uh, Bullseye Playground not long ago, like maybe a year or two, but not recently. So these are super cool and they sell them in like a primary colored pack and they've got um, shiny ones with glitter in them. They've got all kinds of different quick sticks. So check those out. They are so fun. Kids love them. I explained to them they're not glue, but they're paint in a stick and you can use them to make pictures. So super fun. Now the next one is super simple and easy. Uh, I like to have trays in my art center. Now it doesn't have to be this tray that I'm showing you on the screen with these little divots. That's, that's for something else, but this is just one I'm using to demo, but you can get lovely trays at the dollar store. Again, Target Bullseye Playground is my favorite place to get these art trays, so to speak. Um, it doesn't have to look like this, but it's just a plastic tray that kind of contains things. And when my kids use like the quick sticks to make little paintings, I like to have those in a tray that kind of reminds them that they should keep the paint sticks in this area and not color anything else. And when they use the craft punches, I do the same thing. I like to keep have them keep it in a tray if possible. And one of the reasons is that it catches all the little pieces that come out when they punch, right? Uh, because if they don't use them all, I like to collect those in a bucket. So we have a full bucket of all of these pre-cut shapes that we can use for other things. Um, so I like to have them contained in here. So for that reason, I like to use trays in my art center as well. So they're just empty. And then if the kids want to do something like this, like use craft punches or quick sticks or do, you know, anything really, they can get one if they want. Um, sometimes I'll suggest if I notice that it's getting out of control, especially when you introduce the liquid glue. That's when it becomes mandatory to use a tray. So the next item on my list is an easel, an art easel, right? Now, I think that's kind of a given in any early childhood classroom. A high quality early childhood classroom includes an art center and an easel, hopefully more than one or one, you know, more than one side. So you can have multiple children there. Um, but one of my, we'll call it a pro tip, if you will, is to take a plastic tablecloth or a shower curtain from the dollar store, nothing fancy, or even the party section of a dollar store, they have these tablecloths. It doesn't matter. But if your easel is near a wall, put that sucker up on the wall next to the easel so you don't have to worry about paint getting transferred to the wall. Yeah, you can thank me later. <laughs> that is a genius, right? And the other thing are used greeting cards. And that sounds silly. This may not be something that's around for much longer because I don't know if people still send greeting cards. My family does. I still get them. I still send them. Uh, but just know that maybe someday we won't have this as an option anymore. But right now I love using greeting cards with my kids of all ages, ages three, four, and five. It doesn't matter. They love them. I cut the part off that has like the signature of the person who sent it in the met, the written message. I cut that off. I just use the cover of the greeting card and I put them in a big dish tub in my art center. 
and I show the kids how they can use their scissors and their glue sticks and they can create beautiful pictures. And there are some children who will go to the art center and sit for like 30 to 45 minutes of their free play time, making these beautiful pictures by cutting out little parts of these greeting cards and gluing them on things. And one of the things I like about using greeting cards as well is I then ask them once they've created something, what is your picture about? What did you make or whatever? And they'll say, well, it's this, this, and this. And I said, oh, maybe you should put some words on there to tell other people what it's about. Do you think? Or maybe you should put your name on it, whatever you think they're ready for. And a lot of times they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I should do that. I'm like, ha ha, that's putting the vegetables in the mac and cheese, right? So one way I used to get green cards and you can do the same is ask your uh, parents of your students, ask your friends and family, ask your church community, I've received donations from all of those different places of greeting cards over the years. I actually had a lady, um, I think she's passed now, it's been a while, but she used to send me greeting cards from her church three times a year in a great big box. It was like Christmas every single time. And I just loved it. I would open the box with the kids present. And they'd be like, what did Miss Nancy send this time? I'm like, what do you think? And they're like, it's cards. It's cards for the art center. Now, these are just some ideas to get you started because often the most popular materials in your art center don't have to be the ones that you had to buy at the store, right? Sometimes if you follow the children's interests and you put things in the art center that they have found interesting, right? So for example, you might put out some leaves or some twigs or some buttons or some plastic bottle caps, some wiggly eyes. That's one that they really like when you use the liquid glue and some chenille stems to spice things up. The key here is that you're going to add things and also put some things away throughout the year to add interest, right? Now, here are a few pro art center tips for you. So pro tip number one is to put out a bunch of different sized paint brushes, right? So we've got, I love these spongy ones. I like to put those out the first time I introduce tempera paint to the kids at the easel. These are nice and broad and they make broad strokes. And gradually over the year, um, I will put out brushes that have different widths and thicknesses. So here are some very fine ones. They're not just for watercolor. You can use them um, for tempera as well. You decide but they, you can get these for very cheap at the dollar store. So I like to have a variety of different sized paint brushes available to them. And this next tip is really going to save you a lot of time. And that is in your paint cups, right? Because everyone has paint cups. Did you know they sell these at Dollar Tree now? You can get paint cups there. They were so hard to find for a long time. You had to go to a teacher store and pay a lot when basically it's just a plastic cup, right? but now they have them at the dollar stores. So you can put a baggie in here, a little plastic sandwich bag, and put your paint in there to make cleaning paint up super easy. And this bag I'm showing you here is a recyclable bag, just in case you were wondering. Of course, you're also going to need some basic essentials, right? Things like crayons and markers, uh, a drying rack, and some paint smocks. Now, my favorite paint smocks are from Ikea. I love them because they have the arms or the sleeves in them, and they have little elastic around the wrists, you know, for those little girls who sometimes wear elaborate uh, lacy things, um, or in the winter when all your kids are wearing long sleeves and you don't want them to get paint all over. Now, I'm going to guess your next questions. And the first question that I bet you're thinking of or asking right now is, do you put all this stuff out on the first day of school? The next question I bet you're thinking or asking right now is, well, don't they make a mess with all that stuff out there? Or how do you keep the art center clean if you have all that stuff? Or maybe you're thinking, how do you keep the kids from breaking those paint sticks or wasting all the tape or the glue? So my answer to question one, which was, do you have all this stuff out on the first day of school, is an emphatic no. I have out paper 
and crayons on the first day, maybe a pencil or two, and that's it. Nothing goes out in the art center until I have introduced it with the children and I've set the expectations for how they will use the item, right? So like when I show them the paint sticks, I will show them. We take the cap off, we twist the bottom up, we can create anything we want, any pictures we want. When we're done, we twist it down and we put the cap back on and we put it in the tub or wherever it goes, right? That was how I would introduce something to them. I think I also forgot to mention that, um, for example, when I do the craft punches, once I've introduced those, I make sure to stop by just briefly at the art center and I'll make my own creation. Like, oh, guess what? It's my um, mom's birthday next week and I'm going to make her a card and I'm going to make, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to use a lot of the materials. Um, but I will focus on the, you know, craft punches if that's what I want them to see me using. And usually they'll come like moths to a flame to watch me do that. Um, and that just helps them understand how to use those items properly. And I'll talk through the whole process. Oh, I remember I have to uh, take the paint stick out and I have to turn it up and now I can make anything I want. I'm going to make my mom a picture of a cake. Here's the candle. Uh, oh, I'm done now. And I, what should I do next? Oh yeah, I have to turn it, turn, twist it down, put the cap on, put it back. Um, so I'm talking through the process, but I'm not talking at them and they listen in. It's really fun. So it would be ridiculous to put all this stuff out on the first day of school. That would not be realistic. It would not be practical. It would be frustrating for you and the kids. Now, question number two was, don't they make a mess? And my answer is yes. But I believe that messes go with the territory in preschool. So if you're afraid of a little mess, then maybe you're in the wrong profession. I think messes in the art center are evidence of learning, right? If they make a mess then the next logical step is we teach them how to clean it up, right? Question three was, how do you keep it clean? And my answer is very simple. I don't. <laughs> my kids do. So if we have an expectation of keeping a center clean, then we need to teach that expectation to our kids. It's as simple as that. And I'm going to reinforce it too. Now, question number four was, how do you keep them from breaking the whatever, insert whatever material it is, or wasting the insert material? And my answer for this question is very similar to the answer to question three. If I don't want my kids to ruin the paint sticks or waste the tape, I'm going to teach them how to use those things. I teach them how to use those quick sticks appropriately. I have logical consequences, like if the quick sticks are ruined, because we misused them, right? Then we won't have them for a while. It's as simple as that. And neither will our friends. I always say that. And neither will all of our friends. And if they're using too much tape, you know, because money doesn't grow on trees, um, I'm going to set a limit on the amount that can be used per person per day. But what they don't know is I really don't keep track of that because they police each other on that. They're like, oh, she's using too much tape. And I'll say, well, what are you going to do about it? You know, what should you say? Should you say something? I don't, I don't get in, involved in all that. So if the tape is used up too soon, same thing. We won't have any tape for a while. One time I had, and I'm sure some of you can relate. I had dried up dry erase markers in my writing center. And every day they would come in and they would say, the dry erase markers don't work. And I would say, oh, I know somebody forgot to put the caps on. I guess we won't have them for a while. And like after a week of that, the kids got really frustrated with me and two different kids came in with packs of dry erase markers for the class. I felt so bad. They, it was so important to them that they had went home and told their families and their families bought the dry erase markers. So it was pretty funny, but hey, it worked, right? And even if you have a tiny classroom, you can still have an amazing art center, right? Even if you don't have tons of space, all you need is a table. All the art supplies can be stored in a caddy or um, a milk crate under the table. They could be in tubs that you have stored under the table. It doesn't have to be a big, elaborate, expensive $400 piece of furniture from the teacher supply store. And of course, you're going to want to make sure that the materials that you do have are organized and they're easily accessible for the kids, right? That's an important part of having a successful art center. 
because when kids can quickly and easily find and use the materials in the art center, they'll be much more likely to create with them. And some tools that we have over in the Pre-K Pages store um, are the labels. So we have labels for every center in your classroom. They're editable, so you can type or customize in the text that you would prefer them to say. So if you have certain words or terms that you use or whatever. Um, so those are available to you in the store as well. And if you want more information about how to set up successful centers in the early childhood classroom, or you want to see pictures of each center and materials lists and so forth, then you can download my free center essentials guide. And if you're watching along, we'll put a link for you in the um, description box right below the video. Just click on more and you'll find all the links there. You have to scroll down. And if you're listening along, go to prekpages.com and type in Center Essentials Guide into the search box and you will find it there. Until next time, I'm Vanessa Levin, Onward and Upward. If you think these videos are valuable, you have got to come check out the Teaching Trailblazers program. Teaching Trailblazers is the place for teachers like you to get the professional development resources and support you need to thrive. It's where you can learn relevant, life-changing best practices with professional development created specifically around the challenges early childhood teachers face. It's where you can get access to a complete research-based pre-K curriculum that you can use either to supplement your existing curriculum or use on its own to get 100% of your students kindergarten ready by the end of the year. And it's where you can hang out and connect over all things early childhood with other teachers just like you and me. It's my favorite place on earth and it will change your teacher life, I guarantee it. Come join us at teachingtrailblazers.com to get more information and apply today. That's teachingtrailblazers.com. I can't wait to see you there.